Welcome to Inform Choices and today we have two powerful women who have given their entire lives and continue to do so by translating compassion into action. We have Dr. Geeta Mehta who, has, who is an adjunct professor of architecture and urban design at Columbia University in New York and the founder of Asia Initiatives, a non-profit organization with the motto to help a woman rise. Working with Asia Initiative, she has innovated the system of social capital credits called SOX, a community currency for social good that is incentivizing communities in three continents to become active partners in their own success and to create a multiplier effect for each development dollar coming into the community. SOX are now being used in India, Ghana, Kenya and USA. For her work, Gita was recognized as one of the 21 leaders of the 21st century by Women's E-News in 2015. We are also delighted to have Eva Heller, who is a philanthropist and social educational and environmental activist in the United States and across the globe. She serves as the chair of the Board of Advisors for Asia Initiatives and on several other boards. Eva is a recipient of the Mandali Award for Humanitarian Achievement, the inaugural Mentoring Award at Forbes Women's Summit, and a Lifetime Achievement Award at the United Nations Population Fund. More recently, she became a visiting professor at Glasgow Caledonian University, where she received an honorary doctorate and was awarded the 2014 Magnuson Fellowship. A member of the Global Philanthropist Circle, who use their time, influence, and resources to fight poverty and social injustice. Welcome to the studios, and I'm glad you could be part of uh, Informed Choices today. So, Geeta, tell us about uh, what inspired you to initiate Asia Initiatives and the SOC propo proposition. Thank you for having us today. Uh, for a very long time, I had believed that the key to real development is women. And uh, so everything we do at Asia Initiatives is pro-women, pro-poor, and pro-environment. And uh, the real inspiration uh, for this came when I met a real visionary leader in India. Uh, his name is Professor M. S. Swaminathan. Mm -hmm. And when I saw the amazing work they are doing in the field in empowering women in a very scientific, uh, very systematic way, so then I jumped in and I said, okay, we have to form a foundation to support this kind of work. Now we have projects with them as well as with many, many other nonprofits. And your second part of the question was social capital credits or Absolutely. SOCs. Mm -hmm. uh, so this is, uh, SOCs is a community currency for social good. And uh, it empowers communities to take charge of their own development. And uh, uh, social capital credits work a little bit like carbon credits, but also like airline points. You do good things for your community and you collect points in your uh, SOC book and you spend them on education, healthcare, and skill empowerment. So it's basically human capital. Exactly, India. exactly. We think that the world is too focused on, um, on uh, financial capital, mm -hmm. but we think it's equally important to think about social capital and ecological capital. Absolutely. So we are really pushing ahead with social capital because we think the world needs to recognize that wealth. Okay, okay. You I know, uh, one other thing, uh, so much of help to countries of need have been in lending, mm -hmm. and lending to women, mm -hmm. because women return the money right. that they, they borrow. But when you borrow money, mm -hmm. there's an interest there. Mm -hmm. right. And that interest really diminishes what you're really taking home and having there to build with. Mm -hmm. So. Even though uh, microcredit has been an enormous boost and help to people, it really does not address the basic issue mm -hmm. of how people learn to help themselves without the encumbering of owing interest mm -hmm. or owing mm -hmm. money. Mm -hmm. This is grassroots mm -hmm. at its very most meaningful. Right. This is grassroots that you can walk away from mm -hmm. because the community got it. Mm -hmm. right. They are doing it. Right. Mm -hmm. They got it. They know that if they are going to get the social credit, that they can buy school books with, for their kids. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And 
that kind of a human dignity mm -hmm. that social capital gives, no other program that I know of gives. So, yes, yes, this is, this is the very best mm -hmm. of possible program for enhancing human lives. And to generate human capital, because I think a lot of countries are struggling with this, that yes. they are investing a lot in the rehab cost rather than the proactive cost. Mm -hmm. Emma, mm -hmm. my question to you is, um, what make, made you choose Asia Initiatives and throw your full support behind SOX, and how do you feel about it? Well, you know, I think that most of us people who are interested in philanthropy, interested in helping people, countries, concepts, do it maybe 50% because they care about the cause. But let's remember that the majority of reason any of us put our energy, effort, money, interest into anything is for a human being. Right. Mm -hmm. and that, you know, I love India. I, you know, as a kid, uh, uh, Gandhi was my hero, and Rabin Ganak Tagore was my poet. My, I, I have had my whole life admiration for India, but it needed to happen to meet Gita Mehta <laughs> <laughs> to make it feel that yes, I want to put my support and my energy and my interest right. uh, and be honored by the possibility of being part of what she does. Absolutely. So there's no question about it that it is my deep love for India, my deep appreciation of SOX as a program, right. and mostly my enormous love and admiration of, of Gita and her husband, Krishan, <laughs> because there is no Gita without Krishan. <laughs> <laughs> and so it's like a long-awaited uh, eternal connection that, absolutely. that put both of you together. Oh, absolutely. Okay. It, it is a privilege, it's a joy, and it's fun. It's fun. I agree with that. It's fun. Gita, um, tell us, how do you measure the impact that is generated with this concept of social capital credit mm -hmm. locally and globally and since right now you're also doing mm -hmm. projects in the US. Mm -hmm. Right, so um, actually social capital credits by its design is a very measurable thing so that uh, every member who's mm -hmm. doing social capital credits gets a soft book. Mm -hmm. So let's say you went down and did community good planting trees, cleaning the village pond, cleaning the village well, mm -hmm. and uh, maybe paving a street, making sure there are no mosquitoes in the right. uh, disease season. So all those things you're going to get points for, that they get recorded in your book. So we immediately have a record of who did what. Okay. So it's very measurable. So we measure in every project key performance indicators. Uh, so what was the goal of the project? Was mm -hmm. it women's empowerment? Was it girls' education? So whatever the goal was, it becomes measurable because we can count the right. socks people earned and redeemed. So on both uh, earning and redeeming side, it's very measurable. And we never go into a project and say, let me tell you what to do. We always start with what we call a Socratic dialogue. Right. We spell it with S-O-C-C, -C, which is socks. <laughs> And we say, okay, you tell us mm -hmm. what is it that would improve your life and what are you willing to do for that, right? So it becomes a menu they created. People are in the driver's seat. It's their project, it's not our project. We are simply facilitators. And mm -hmm. then uh, when that is done, then people create a, a spending menu on what do they want to spend their hard-earned socks on. So usually it's healthcare, education of the daughters, sons, mm -hmm. and uh, skill empowerment. Like if people want to make their children employable, they want them to have computer training, and so things like that. So, so on both sides of earning and redeeming, it's measurable. And okay. we think that that's one of the magic of social capital credits. And whatever a donor wants to spend, whether it's us or a partner, uh, they will get two or three times the benefit. Okay, because people are doing something to earn what you were going to give them in the first place. And so it's, it's basically it's community. a community. I'm mm -hmm. sorry. Yes, there's it's community building. Yes. Right. Yes. With dignity. And it's, it also carries the user friendly approach that mm -hmm. a lot of software programs carry because it is giving the ownership to the user. Totally. From needs totally. to, to yes. the output. And um, Eva, how 
do you see this concept different uh, since you have done so much of philanthropy work? So how do you see this concept being different when it comes to empowering uh, women and families? You know, it has been shown all over the world, whether it's in Asia, in Africa, in Europe, in the United States, Central America, mm -hmm. everywhere, that basically the women hold the family together. Mm -hmm. And if it's women who hold the family together, they hold the community together. Mm -hmm. And so a program that relates to women and empowers women to feel their strengths, their ability to pull together the community, that is how you build a nation. That's mm -hmm. how you build human beings. Right. That's how sons and daughters become caring about their own future and create responsibility. So that is why SOX is a program that seems to be without a border. Mm -hmm. It's a program without a border. It really doesn't have to be in India. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have to be in countries that are not as industrialized as mm -hmm. the United States. Because it turns out that SOX is doing very well, thank you, in the United States. Mm -hmm. So what proof can there be better <laughs> than right. to say that any program that is humanistic should be able to work anywhere in the world? Mm -hmm. And SOX does. Mm -hmm. We are actually uh, right now working in Africa, in Ghana and in Kenya. Mm -hmm. We are also in Costa Rica and like you said in United States in Washington DC. And so our name is Asia Initiative, so what are we doing in Africa? Because we had a partner, we have a partner, Women Strong International. Okay. They said, wow, mm -hmm. this is working so well, come with us to Ghana and Kenya and do it. And those are our you know, very strong programs that we are very excited yeah. about. So people are not noticing this model and want to replicate in their mm -hmm. own regions, yes. regardless of your name, Asia Initiatives, they yes. approach you. Sure. So Geeta, tell us, when we think about social impact, mm -hmm. there are two factors that come to mind mm -hmm. as challenges. One is, how do we eradicate poverty? Yes. And the second one is, how do we build sustainable communities? Mm -hmm. Tell us, um, how does SOC create this mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. bridge this? Uh, in the form of output. Mm -hmm. um, as Eva mentioned, the key point here is to build community. If you're going to keep on giving something to the community and they're dependent on you, that's never going to be sustainable. Okay. So our goal is to go into a project and create that community, uh, let people, let leadership emerge. Uh, let uh, you know people begin to identify their own strength and take ownership of the project. Mm -hmm. So this uh, we think is what sets us apart, that people have the ownership and they are doing it on their terms, right. which is what we think will eventually get them out of poverty and also be sustainable. Uh, so then in every project we have a uh, exit strategy. So when we've done our job and the community is you know, going off on their own, doing all good things, and coming up with ideas we never would have thought of because they know best what they need and Absolutely. how to get it. Mm -hmm. And when young children in, in come in a meeting and they start to raise their hand and say, wait, why are we not doing that? That's what we love. We say, okay, now this is when we, we have are learning. Really yes, yes. Exactly. So everybody's involved in, yes, this, in yes. this. It's not just you give the money, you write a check to the parents, yes. and then they take care of. This program embraces the family, mm -hmm. even the children participate in the program. Totally. And grandmas. And they learn. And, yes, and, they learn. Yes. and perhaps these are the children who can go and think of other ideas and replicate the program in their own villages or mm -hmm. small uh, circles yes. of influence. Right. Um, Kita, there is one thing that I wanted to ask you, and that was, can you share a success story that has mm -hmm. touched your heart deeply? And I know there are many, yes, but could yes. you share one of the stories with right. our audience? At this moment, we're actually working on 18 projects that are ongoing. And uh, let me just talk about one project in Ahmedabad in India. It's really a beautiful project because um, these are seven communities, quite poor, marginalized on the edge of the city. Mm -hmm. And so we focused here on young girls who would otherwise be dropping out of school. And uh, so we said, okay, 
how can we make them help them to finish school and then learn a skill that they that would make them employable uh, so we made what we call Kadam Resource Center for Girls and a big thank you to you because you, are, you have been an advisor for us but you have actually provided uh, computers and technology for I'm this I'm privileged, I'm privileged. So yeah. in this center, so here are these girls coming from super poor communities and they're coming to this really nice place where there are computers, there's internet, there's a teacher, there's a counselor, so they're learning uh, life skills like reproductive health care, how to deal with periods, how to deal with parental pressure when parents are saying, okay, you're 13, get right. married. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, How do you deal with that? What are the arguments you give to your own family? So it's a very holistic development. Uh, but the magic of the model is that the girls earn socks to come to that center. And how do they earn socks? They have to go back to their community and teach five other girls. Oh, ripple effect. Ripple effect. So we have right now 30 girls, and the 30 girls are going out and teaching 150, and then our goal is those 150 then go ahead and teach the rest. Okay. So that it becomes, like you said, a ripple effect. Uh, so we are leveraging um, you know, the power of communities. These girls have now become role models. They walk through the street with their heads high, and wow. people look up to them and say, oh wow, I want my daughter to be like that. You know, I want to be like that. And, uh, and then we are creating leadership. And these young girls are coming up with their own ideas on how they're gonna improve their community. So we think that we are facilitators and the people are doing the magic. Uh, so it's like one of my very okay. special it's, stories. It's an amazing project to see and the measurement mm -hmm. of how many girls don't get married at the age of 13? That is so critical. And what happens mm -hmm. when girls don't get married? Mm -hmm and don't bear children by the time they are 14. Mm -hmm. right. But they learn and they are in school mm -hmm. and they have an opportunity to stand up to the men who really need a lot of learning mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. in right. most of those countries that women have not only power and knowledge but an ability to learn and contribute to the family life mm -hmm. so that the men also are proud of their wives. It's fascinating it to fascinating, see no doubt. how men suddenly mm -hmm. change the way they look at their wives yeah. mm -hmm. and wanting to marry those young girls and when those young girls are not willing to get married to mm -hmm. them, they figure out how to wait mm -hmm. and how to be much more respectful. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. it, it works, again, as you said before, the ripple effect. Yeah. It, the ripper effect can't even be measured. Cannot be measured. You know? Because it translates into so many domains yes. of human development mm -hmm. that you cannot measure, but you can see, witness. But to a certain extent, of course, SOC is able to measure, but it goes beyond measurement. Yes. And uh, one of the interesting things that I got to witness was I got to meet these girls yes. when they were invited by the United Nations. So can you see the girls who had no vision, no hope mm -hmm. of being educated or, you mm -hmm. know, thinking that they would be able to even, you know, learn anything in their mm -hmm. own country, were invited by the UN. Yes. Mm -hmm. This is how far your efforts in Asia initiatives and SOC projects mm -hmm. has made people mm -hmm. see themselves beyond, you mm -hmm. know, beyond the, the borders. The idea of leaving one's village, yes. to leaving one's country, yeah. to get on an airplane, mm -hmm. to be recognized for achievement, internationally, internationally mm -hmm, right. is the impact is so enormous. Mm -hmm, yeah. I've seen so many of young people who were brought over, mm -hmm. unfortunately some of them in the winter and never yeah, having yeah. had a coat on, <laughs> yeah, yeah. never having seen mm -hmm. snow. Right. But when they go back home, mm -hmm. they are really so appreciated. And, and they have a whole different sense of hey, we have seen the world and we came back home mm -hmm. to share the world with you. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. What an insp inspiration. Yes. Um, well, there, is, um, there are two things. When we talk about impact uh, in terms of um, social justice issues or uh, philanthropy or social causes, the number one thing that comes to our mind is sustainable funding. Mm -hmm. And that's a challenge. Mm -hmm. How do you see Asia Initiatives, um, you know, combating that and fulfilling its mission, especially when, you know, uh, you guys are celebrating the 16th year and gala celebrations are here in October? You know, 
Uh, funding is always an issue and it's always problematic. And it's such a pity that one has to spend so much time and energy in trying to raise the funds. Right. On the other hand, Asia Initiative is such a clearly understandable organization and so very attractive that there are many people who want to be part of it. This year's gala is such a wonderful example of the level of appreciation for the organization. To have Ban Ki-moon, who was the Secretary General of the United Nations, to fly in to give the award to women who Gita and others chose to be honored, like mm -hmm. Gloria Steinem, right. Oyasu, who is the opera of China and has 200 million viewers every day and on yourself, television. And yourself, USA, can, and Eva, and, and Eva, yes. Well, uh, Gloria Steinem, who has been our idol for at yes. least 50 years. The pioneer. Uh, a pioneer in, in feminine issues mm -hmm. and, and in women's empowerment. So it is not, uh, you know, if you think about the, the people who want to be part of and identified mm -hmm. with Asian initiatives, that in itself is, is telling you volumes. volumes. Mm -hmm. And so the fact that the gala each year has volunteers to create it. There are no people who are hired to create a gala. This is Gita, who is the Pied Piper. <laughs> yeah. Gita, what would be your message um, to young women mm -hmm, mm -hmm. who are looking forward to change the world? Right. So let's say that they are in the United States and in New York. I want to say that come join us. Uh, because like the gala we are having in New York on October 13th uh, in uh, uh, New York Athletic Club. Uh, so that's, uh, you know, that kind of volunteerism, I like Eva mentioned, is one thing. But wherever you are in the world, if you want to change your community and you want to bring together people like yourselves, then I think if you reach out to us through our website, uh, which is asianinitiatives.org, uh, or you know, email to us or call us, and we are open to working everywhere in the world with people who have ignited you know that idea mm -hmm. of change, mm -hmm. and we want to support them um, in whatever ways we can. And I think in the end of the day, like Eva said, it's the young people who have the idealism. I teach at Columbia University, and I'm just totally uh, impressed with the idealism of the young people. And also I think we are going through a particular moment in history around the world where there's so many divisions and disagreements. Right. But the people who come around to work with us or the kind of people who come to our gala, I think they're making a big statement that, you know, we are bigger than this. Uh, you know, our, our community spirit and our passion to help help around the world is bigger than the divisions we are in. So we think that's like an amazing message to send to young people to around young the people. world. Eva, yes. what would be your message to young women who want to embark on a journey that you have? And your timeline is fascinating with so much work that you have done to lift lives. What would you like to tell young girls and young boys? I would like to tell them, have fun. <laughs> because there is nothing that gives you more fun than to learn. You learn geography, mm -hmm. you learn diplomacy, mm -hmm. you learn all kinds of things about mm -hmm. customs and people, and it is the most amazing journey that you can have is when you go to a country and you're not just a tourist, mm -hmm. but you take brick by brick and build a school or go to paint a school, or work in the agriculture mm -hmm. with, with the young people in the country, or learn about animals, uh, the environment. You, you become part of what the fabric of the world is about. There is no better way to learn about the world and your own place in the world, and your own possible contribution in the world, than getting involved in philanthropy. Mm -hmm. It is just so much fun, right. and you are really gaining, right. learning, 
appreciating. Mm -hmm. And mostly, you are appreciated. Mm -hmm. After all, you get awarded for having fun. Correct. I mean, mm -hmm. how many people can say that I got an award because I'm having so much fun? <laughs> Thank you so much for being here today Thank you. and uh, sharing such wonderful insight. Thank you so much. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, the concept of social credit as we now understand is simply a bottom-up initiative, giving power and freedom of choice to communities so that they are stakeholders in their success. Implementation of SOX entails drawing up earning and redemption menus, highlighting tasks that the communities or individuals could perform to earn SOX and items that they require on redemption. We hope you will join us at the upcoming gala on the 13th October at the New York Athletic Ballroom to have fun and learn more how you can get involved and do your share in lifting lives and creating impact. For details, please go to asiainitiatives.org and thank you for watching Informed Choices, where together we hope to craft better perceptions.